Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible.com. Get a free audiobook download and a 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com slash Dan's Book Reviews. Dan Dan the Art Man's Book Reviews, Episode 34, The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald. The Great Gatsby was great. I didn't remember much from when I read it in high school back in the late 90s, so I wasn't sure what to expect. I do remember liking it, which stood out, because most books we had to read in high school were terrible. And this is coming from someone who loves to read. While I agree with people that most of the characters aren't exactly likable, they are interesting, and reading about them was fun. If you want to read a book with characters who have no redeeming qualities, give Wuthering Heights a try. (laughs) Those characters make the people in The Great Gatsby seem kind of nice, At least they're usually civil. I love the beautiful symbolism in this book. I love Fitzgerald's prose. It was beautiful as well. It is easy for me to appreciate Fitzgerald's writing for how well it flows and the great command he has over it. Many classic books are like this, but have extremely boring stories. Not this one. It moves at a pretty good pace. I usually have to plow through parts of classics because they contain big blocks of boring stuff, but with Gatsby, I felt like I was on a grand ride the whole time, soaring over the twenties with Nick the narrator as my pilot. I sat, as he did, looking over the scenery as we passed over it. There's a line where he describes pulling up to an apartment. At 158th Street, the cab stopped at one slice in a long white cake of apartment houses. Fitzgerald, page 32. He didn't fill the sentence with tons of words, and yet there's so much great stuff packed in there. What an image. Quite a different image from Gatsby's big house. I just loved that line. As was the case with most of the book. The only other book I've read by Fitzgerald is This Side of Paradise. While I was often admiring the writing, its story meandered compared to Gatsby. Another reason this book was enjoyable to read is that there are so many great images in it that stick with you. Most books I've read can only conjure up a few images when I think back on them, but Gatsby is chocked full of them, and they're wonderful ones. The eyes of Dr. T.J. Eckelberg, the ash heaps, Gatsby's yellow car, his parties, his pool, that green light across the water. I could go on. The last thing I'll say is that when reading The Great Gatsby, I really got the sense of the environment. The writing did a good job of bringing me into the world of the Roaring Twenties. It all felt so grand, bright, and glittery, and at the same time grungy, cheap, and shallow. Shallow people surrounded by glamour. The book captures its time so well, which is why it's listed as one of the great American novels. As far as classics go, this is one of my favorites. (laughs) Oh... You know another one of my favorites? Audible.com. They've got a deal for just you, the listeners of this podcast. If you go to audibletrial.com slash Dan's Book Reviews, you can get a free audiobook and a free 30-day trial of their services. Let me tell you why I love Audible. For one, they save me a ton of money because most of the audiobooks I like to listen to are pretty long and usually cost anywhere from 30 to like 60 bucks. I just pay 15 bucks a month and that gives me one credit to download and own one audiobook. So it's usually like cutting my price in half or saving me even more than 50%. Here's another thing. I'm not going to name which book it was, but I recently was listening to an audiobook, a pretty popular new one, 
and I just could not get into it. I can't remember the length of the book, but uh, I still had eight hours of listening to go, and the more I listened, the angrier I got, and the less I cared about the characters or the story. And so for the first time ever, I returned an audiobook. Within a certain amount of time, you can return an audiobook if you didn't like it. I had already listened to it, downloaded it to my phone. Um, I still had eight hours of it left to go, so I hadn't listened to all of it, but I was like over 25% of the way through that book. I just did not like it. I just didn't care. So I returned it, and they gave me a new credit to spend on a different book. It literally took me like 20 seconds. I just did it all on their website. It was amazing. They just give you like a list of five reasons why you're returning it. You click it, you get a new credit. That's pretty much it. So I can't say enough about Audible and their customer service. If you end up spending one of your precious credits on an audiobook that just doesn't do it for you, or somehow you got the wrong book, maybe you accidentally got the second book in a series and you wanted the first or something like that, you can just return it. So you can get this book narrated by your friend Jake Gyllenhaal, or Jake Gyllenhaal, you know who I'm talking about, Donnie Darko himself, narrating The Great Gatsby for free if you go to audibletrial.com slash Dan's Book Reviews. Free 30-day trial membership, free audiobook that you own for life. It also gives me a little bit of a support for the show. So flick a nickel into my hat as I perform on the street while you pass by. Or something like that. Now, let's get back to that review. Okay, so I've read The Great Gatsby twice. And as a writer, I really appreciate it for its poetic prose. He's a great, talented writer. And just the way he describes everything, too, like I said, it just really brought me into that world, uh, as terrible of a world as it is. It's just cool to see this mysterious character of Jay Gatsby kind of come into the light as Nick, the main character of the book, even though it's called The Great Gatsby. A lot of people will uh, tell me that they believe this is not the case, but I would say Nick is the main character of The Great Gatsby. He's the viewpoint character. He's the one that goes through a change, whereas Gatsby never really changes. Anyway, uh, we don't even meet Gatsby, you know, for quite a while. So, yeah, not the main character. <laughs> I think I got into a bit of a debate about this somewhere online one time. Anyway, believe what you will, but... Uh, it was just cool to kind of discover who the Great Gatsby was as Nick discovers him, this mysterious neighbor who lives in this mansion, can be seen out on the dock, looking across the water at a glowing green light. So, I don't know, I'm sure you've had to read this book for school, so I don't know what else I wanna say about it other than I love the writing, uh, the story, I actually enjoyed quite a bit. The book kind of moves along at a good pace for me. It's not a very long book. Uh, that's probably part of it, too. It's pretty short, so, you know, you can read it pretty quick, pretty quickly. And, um, I don't know, it's like, if you're going on a quick trip, and you're like, I want to read a classic, what would you recommend? If you don't have much time at all, The Old Man and the Sea by Ernest Hemingway. Simple, plain quick writing. Or if you want something with a little more to it, I love The Old Man in the Sea. But if you want something a little longer but still short, get The Great Gatsby. Uh, great writing. You could learn a lot about beautiful fiction writing there. And yeah, I think the story is much more fun to read than This Side of Paradise. I haven't read his other books, but I really probably should. I haven't read a classic in a long time. And lately I've been reading books, chapter books, because my oldest is seven, and I need to get more books for him to read. Recently we just read uh, one called Diary of a Sixth Grade Ninja. 
and that was pretty cool. He liked it a lot. I got him the second one. I think there are six in the series, but anyway. That's all I got for you guys this week. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope to get another one of these out very soon, and next week looks like I will be reviewing an awesome fantasy novel called The Warded Man by Peter V. Brett. So, come on back for some review of some awesome fantasy. Pretty much, if you go out into this world at night, demons rise out of the ground, and the only way to be protected is to draw wards that kind of make a boundary around things and protect you from the demons. This guy is the warded man. So, take a wild guess what he does to venture out into this vast, treacherous wilderness, cursed by the evil demons that rise from the ground at night. When most people have wards that protect their farm, and you can only go so far at the end of the day, because you have to get back in time to get behind the protective wards. Pretty interesting, pretty great book. I gave it five stars, I loved it. So come on back next week and hear why. Mike, take it away. This podcast is licensed under a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial, no derivative works license. Music by Kevin McLeod, found at incompetech.com. The website that goes with this podcast can be found at dandantheartman.com. And you can follow Dan on Twitter, Google+, and Facebook at dandantheartman. For Dan, this is Mike Luoma saying happy reading, and we'll see you next time.